Hello there, I'm Scrontulous, and this is Tep in Deck Tech, where I present to you decks that are fun, strong, or interesting. Today we are playing what is still the coolest hero art, in my opinion, X Charge Shot. Just like last time, this deck is genuinely considered totally unviable, but by using a bit of the Charge Shot support that we keep getting, and some of the strongest cards currently in the game, we have a strategy that can spiral into huge numbers with a powerful built-in comeback mechanic. Starting things off with our units, we have 3 Feline, 3 Rico, and 2 Nibble Snarf, who will pull either Mia or Rico. This is generally what you want to try to mulligan for, that being any two of our MP boost units, including Mia Fey if you have something to ascend for her. We are only playing two Nibble Snarf because overall we have enough other starters, and you can't always play a third Nibble or even a second one in some games. It is one of our best starters, but it's only amazing if you also have a Mia Fey, who we only have three of, so two Nibble makes sense to me. All of our other units are one ofs. Nurse Survivor Cinnamon is an instant win condition for our hero art, and a beacon for disarms and removal. If she can proc charge shot on our board just once or twice, it's gonna be basically game over, but she gets removed pretty fast. Your best bet is to drop cinnamon after you already charge shot, and then you have a lane open. When she does hit the board, cinnamon is potentially infinite value with our charge shot. Just be ready to buff her or to lose her. Next we have one Nero, who is the first card to take advantage of the multi-tribal theme we have going. Being Unleashed 20 and needing a bit of setup is why he's only a 1 of, but for a 3 MP unit he is a ton of value and is the best way to finish setting up our board before we pop off. Nero really helps with comebacks just like our next card. Tiny Hero Feline. Feline is actually good at any time of the game, but can really secure a win any time its Unleash activates. Giving shield to our Mias is also huge, and further multiplying our MP, but more than anything else, having two different tribes than our other dual tribe units is why this card is so strong. Feline is the best enabler for our two best actions and does a lot for every part of our strategy. And our last unit is Revived Guardian Gar, another dual tribe unit who we intend to lean into even more than your normal green deck, buffing him up to end the game as soon as he becomes unleashed. And that brings us on to our actions, 13 of which, arguably 14, are all heal actions to help us win with our hero art. The two non-healing actions are Stay Close, which technically heals, it does give plus two plus one under charge shot, but is mostly to protect our best card and to end games. And Disarm is our other one out of archetype tech card that you just really need to have if you don't want to lose to birds. Everything else is a healing action, even our three evasive action, the Guardian's Doubts. Three evasive type cards would normally be a bit much, but this meta actually calls for it, with Faith and the other tribe deck. So being able to play three evasive while buffing our field in archetype is the general theory behind why this deck should do well. This card is already good for us before we charge shot, and once we do, it can win us the game. Moving on to the cards that will always win us the game, we have three Entrusted Hope, which is the big payoff for all our tribal units. This card is already huge value before we charge shot, being the single card that really lets us win the early game. We do get one more attack from it once we use our hero art, but Kanzuki Resistance is what we really get value off of with our charge shot. Setting up the four tribes is extremely easy for this deck, and doing so will win us the game regardless of our hero art. This card is completely busted. We are also very consistent at finding it with our slight deck thinning from Nibble Snarf and Hearts Reclaimed at 2. I obviously tested 3, but drawing the second copy pretty consistently before searching it felt really bad. Playing 1 mostly cuts out this downside, while still letting it be a good card that gets you guaranteed follow-up for once you use Charge Shot. Our final actions are 3 The Only Escape, 
This card also benefits tremendously from our slight deck thinning and cycling from our MP ramp. The only escape helps us protect any unit we want to, procking our charge shot, and the third time we do it, it becomes a win con. This card gives a lot of surprise inevitability to our deck that we can have ready for any time our opponent makes a mistake. Our last card is Sanctuary's Gate, which is 9 HP for 1 MP. Insane value and game winning if we have Charge Shot. It hard counters red decks and is the best card that Charge Shot could ask for. Here's the deck QR for you, and with all that said, let's get into it. Game 1, we are up against our timeless and eternal rival Zero. Hopefully, it will be a battle for the ages. We will start things off with the same play as our opponent, perfectly in sync. And they will follow that up with Mia Fey, the one that got the HP buff in their hand, and they will activate Wild Resistance, searching a monster to their hand. We will use Guardian Staff to effectively do 2 damage to Mia and heal our Rico by 3, and they will use Disarm to steal our MP boost. We'll play Nibble Snark, which will currently buff their entire field by one attack, and we will get Mia Fey from our deck. Our opponent will play Rico, and they will use their Hero Art to search Maverick Hunter, and will decide that now is the time to completely all in on our current board with four tribes and the opportunity for Kanzuki resistance. We will take it. All of our units are now able to attack directly, unrespondably, and at the next opportunity, we will use Entrusted Hope to further buff up one of our units. Our opponent will use Letter for Lottie without the memory, just getting a unit. They seem a little desperate to find something to stop the onslaught. We will use Guardian's Doubts to finally protect our Mia in the top lane, but we are honestly giving our opponent more opportunity than we need to. They'll use the only escape. They might find an answer, and at this point with only 10 HP left for them to received from our combo, we will just let it roll. Maverick will hit the middle unit that we have, but they need more than that to stop the damage we are getting in for game one. Game two, we are up against a top 10 Nergigante player, which normally I would save for game three, but this time we have something even better in my opinion. We've got one more game to prepare. Hopefully we can play it perfectly. We'll start off to get our MP ramp going with our feline, and our opponent will get their faith engine going with blaze. They will play down the April that they get the faith buff from, and we will ascend Mia Fey over our feline so we win the first trade. Our opponent will play Blade, and we will play down Nibble Snarf, buffing up both of their units, pulling a tiny hero feline from our deck, which will protect our Mia Fey for one more trade, and they will play down a Satsuki, which has also gotten a faith buff. We're chewing through the faith buff that they've gotten pretty well, but when they play down their Tyrant Trader Raymarsh, they will clear our board, including our current best unit, but we haven't used our charge shot yet. We will play down all of the units that we have, uh, roughly 10 MP all in, and we will use our Sanctuary's Gate to buff up all of our cards. Our opponent will remove our Nero with Tender Lender, which was our best option to take out Raymarsh, but everything else will be massively buffed up. We are 5-9 to nine at the end of the game. We can finally seal Raymarsh to protect ourselves and reset her HP. Our opponent will land of light to pull a Fong back to the deck, but right now, Gar's effect will protect us from any damage Fong would get in. He's charging in for 9 damage and is just about unstoppable, and we take game 2. Game 3, we are up against Wooly Versus, and without getting into it, I will just describe him as a super beast at the game. Hopefully, we don't get our pie stolen. We will start things off with Nibble Snarf pulling Mia Fey from the deck. We waited a bit and it seems like Willy is probably on big green. He will activate Disarm and he will respond with Entrusted Hope, but it seems like it was a bit of a bait. He will use Brilliant Turnabout to get Noble Thief Ray from the deck, which Thankfully, we can one-shot with our Mia, but Wall Jump will allow Ray to transform when he takes the damage from Nibble Snarf, getting indirect. We, however, can buff Mia Fey up one more time, which will allow her to one-shot the Were Tiger form, but Wooly has the Guardian's Doubts, which will allow him to make short work of our Mia, while the Were Tiger will start getting in massive pressure. Rejuvenate on top of that is already an unstoppable win condition unless we can quickly pull our charge shot together. 
we will activate one more Entrusted Hope on our Nibble Snarf to try and allow them to contest the Were Tiger. When he's destroyed, the Were Tiger does go back down and then back up by one attack from attacking. Wooly will use Insidious Light to buff their Were Tiger up even farther to a 9 6. We just need to whittle it down by 6 more damage. We can set up our Unleashes at least. Wooly will play down Gar, and when he uses Heart Tank, we will decide that now is the time to all in on our combo. Activating Charge Shot with Rico and and Cinnamon. We will use Sanctuary's Gate. Wooly uses Air Raid, which will do damage to Rico. The Shield will take it, but he can use Seal to block the Shield, allowing the damage to destroy to destroy Rico. And the Were Tiger will and he'll heal the Were Tiger up even more, resetting Rico so that. He, Resetting Cinnamon so he won't take as much damage. Where Tiger will destroy Cinnamon, and it's at this moment that we both remember that the Were Tiger will switch lanes. And now, whether intentionally or not, Wooly is throwing for content. He will play down Ace Attorney Phoenix, which gives him at least 20 seconds to build MP and get back in the game. We will use only Escape to protect our Were Tiger, and Wooly will use Evasive Action, which will lower its attack but increase its HP. We respond to that with Hearts Reclaimed, which Wooly uses Wall Jump in response to, and we can seal Gar in response to that. We will ascend Mia Fey to hopefully give our Were Tiger enough HP to defeat Gar, but Heart Tank will not allow us to do that. Mia and Phoenix will both take each other out, and Wooly will use an infinite uncovered, making it so we can't take out their Gar without putting the pressure on us and probably losing the game. But all we need to do is play our own Gar, unleash its full potential with Charge Shot, and the game is sealed up. Wooly will play Spell Severance, revealing his hand, and out of respect, we will do the same. We'll play down Stay Close, and we will take a very exciting Game 3. Here we are again, and oh my god. I don't want to geek out too much, but I can't hide it. Wooly is the reason that I ever discovered Teppin, from his couple videos he made on it. So this is kind of a big deal to me. So major shouts out to Wooly Versus. Thank you for indirectly introducing this game to me, and I'm sure hundreds of others. Having this happen right before the one year anniversary and the 100 subscriber milestone is just unbelievable. And that said, I'm I'm gonna put up the QR for the budget version of the deck, because some people will skip ahead. Now that you're listening, we are about to reach 100 subscribers, and I've never really bothered to ask outside of my sign-off. But if we got there before the one-year anniversary of the channel, I it would mean a lot to me. And all you, those of you who've already subscribed, I can't thank you enough. I do have something not super out of the ordinary planned for the 100 subscriber one year anniversary special. So definitely subscribe so that you catch it and there should be one more video out before the next set Genma Onslaught I think is what it was called. I suppose I should talk about the deck a little bit. I left a couple of the epics that you need in the budget version. I assume you're going to be trying to build towards them if you're playing mono green. And despite how much you might think about chart shot, this deck does surprisingly well in the meta. I've been taking some crazy wind speaks with this one when I get a good mulligan opening hand. As far as matchups go, other green decks specifically small green, we can pretty much roll over them. Big green is very luck based and is probably not in our favor. Red is super favored for us with Sanctuary and Kanzuki being an instant end the game button against red. And purple, breakaway, we can usually dodge abduction using Entrusted Hope, so that alone makes the matchup pretty doable. Black is definitely the worst matchup for this deck. Raging Demon is very hard to beat, the one saving grace against removal is that this deck consistently sets up multiple units that will require responses, so they might destroy one, but you should still have another Mia or the Feline left on board. I would recommend the deck to anybody who wants to play an all-in combo strategy, and to any X fans who want to make the Heart Tank players jealous. Thank you all for watching. Please let me know down below what you thought of the episode. Please like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you subscribed. Once again, I'm Sconchulus, and I'll see you in the next one.